Hello, and thank you for joining us for this presentation of the Alfresco Activity BPMS. In this presentation, we're going to touch on a number of different areas in the out-of-the-box side of building activity business processes. Our clients have been asking us, what can you do, what can't you do, what's out of the box, and what's customized. We're going to touch on a lot of the out-of-the-box capabilities. Now, when somebody logs in, you'll notice here four tiles by default will show up. Kickstart, My Tasks, Identity Management, and Analytics. Some really cool stuff going on on the analytics side. We'll touch on that in a later video. This hardware is a custom app we'll talk about in a few moments. But right now, let's focus on these four tiles up at the top. The first one we're going to work with is Kickstart. Kickstart is where we'll build our process models. When I click on Kickstart, I'm presented with three different workflows or business processes that I've created. Okay. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to touch on this one, the hardware request one. You'll see this is a pretty typical workflow. I'm sure a lot of you built workflows in the past. This is a pretty typical one. A lot of things going on. I'm going to go into the visual editor now, and this is where we would edit this workflow. Now, in the visual editor, you'll see there are a number of different tools and so forth on the left-hand side. Here is my workflow. Down here at the bottom is information based on whatever the activity or sequence flow that I happen to be working with. Okay. Now, in this example, we start off with an equipment request. All right. And with an equipment request, as you'd expect, you're going to have users assigned to that. You see what's called a candidate user or group. And from here, I can select be that groups or users for this particular task. All right. Now, once that task is done, it'll move on to the next step. And here's where it gets a little more interesting. This is what's called an exclusive gateway versus a parallel gateway. The idea, of course, is when somebody's done with their task, they will send it off to the next task. Now, based on information in that task, it could go somewhere else. So you see here, cost above 1,000 goes this way. Cost below 1,000 goes this way. And of course, if I end up canceling the request, it goes this way. So if I were to click on any of these sequence flows, You'll see down here where it says flow condition, the bottom, estimate cost equals greater than 1,000. So this is the idea that I can select variables that were entered in that form, and by virtue of putting, in this case, greater than 1,000, it knows to go to a certain location. In other words, if cost is above 1,000, it's going to go here. All right. So I've got my condition here. That's my rule. And then from here, I've got the name of it so that way visually when I'm looking at the workflow I can see what's going on all right now you'll also know this little dash right here little slash that is your default flow what that means is after I've drawn out my diagram okay and I put a rule here that says well if it's greater than a thousand go this way however if it's not greater than a thousand and the request is not canceled I want you to go this way. So the idea is you create your default flow. You see in the lower right hand corner, and that's where it's going to go when all else fails, if you will. And of course, you've got to have one default flow for every gateway you set up. All right. With this one, you'll notice flow condition equals cancel. So I've got an outcome in my system that says if I've decided to hit the cancel button, it will go off and go this direction and end the workflow. Okay. Other things to keep in mind when we're talking about gateways is you can have multiple different multiple kinds of gateways. This is a parallel gateway. In this example, we're saying I want to take this task and go this way and this way. All right. So after the equipment order is finished, they'll go off and send it this way with a parallel task. Okay. As well as go to the inventory control group. Now, what's also kind of nice is you can have <clears throat> annotations on each individual task as well to help with explaining what's going on. So somebody who's not incredibly familiar with the process can easily see what is going on with this particular workflow. All right. Other things you'll notice is sort of a loop back here. So a user can go off. Here's another gateway going on. So after the cost review is done, if they reject if I click on it, you know, it says approval information down here equals reject. It will send it back to the equipment request person, and they'll have to start this all over again. The information is there, but perhaps it was rejected for whatever reason, maybe cost too much money, maybe they should pick less expensive equipment. They're able to go off and start the process all over again or cancel it. So it's nice that you can have loopbacks in the process as well. Now, with each one of these tasks, obviously, you're going to have a form where people are going to fill in data. I thought what I'd do is touch base on the approval request form to really give you a flavor of the kinds of things you can do. So I'm going to click on this task right here. I'm going to scroll down. 
and I'm going to go to the approval request form. So I click on that. Now, these are all the forms involved in the overall process. This is the form involved in this particular task. So I'm just going to click open. And now I'm presented with this form. A couple of things I'm going to show you that's nice about the forming. You've got all these controls over here. You can drag and drop and bring them in. Now let's take a look at some of the things I've done. One of the things I've done is I need to select an equipment order person. So I've dragged this in, a person value, if you will. So it's a people control, brought that in. What I also did was not only do I want to select a particular person, but you know what? I want to make sure the person that is selected is part of the equipment order team. I don't need every user in the system showing up for selection purposes because that's just too much. So the idea is I can restrict what people are selected in a given team. So the equipment order team is where the people exist that can be selected for this particular piece. So the idea is I am now selecting in the equipment order person drop down a person from the equipment order team this person will be the next recipient in the workflow so in this process I'm selecting that next recipient all right down here what you're looking at is other fields that were from previous tasks so remember I've ordered equipment these are fields that are coming from tasks that were filled out earlier in the process. So when I initially requested this laptop, this information was filled in by somebody. When it got to the approver, they can see what equipment was requested. Another neat thing is you'll see where it says executives laptop and they see a drop down list. What's nice is obviously if this is an executive's laptop, we need this drop down list. If not, we don't need this. So if I click on this, when I've dragged this drop in in here, you go to the visible configuration, the visibility is I have said that I want to make sure that if it is an executive laptop, okay, it's checked, then I want this field to appear. So basically what you're allowed to do is say only show me this field, executive names, if executive's laptop has been completed. Now in this case, I didn't make any changes to this particular form, but had I done, I could validate the form by clicking the checkbox right here and it will validate, make sure everything's good, and then I would save it, click on the save icon, and I could version it as well. And I could have comments related to that particular change, and then I hit save and close editor. Now I'm back to my workflow. So in this task, I was able to allow the user to assign the next recipient or next assignee in the workflow for the order equipment task. So let me click on that real quick, and I'm gonna scroll down, and you'll see where it says assignments, I've got this assignee piece. So basically what I was able to do is remember in that previous form when I allowed a person to select a person from that drop down list, that value is the value I put right here. So all I did by typing in this value, what that means is whoever is selected in that approval form will be the assignee in this task. So the idea is I'm easily able to say I can either have pre-assigned groups, okay, based on whatever needs to be done, or I can allow you there within a task to be able to assign the next recipient. And as I said earlier, you can have the exclusive gateways, in other words, decision tasks going on, or the parallel. So in this example, once the equipment ordering is completed and the next task is parallel it means I will let inventory control know what's going on as well as based on what the order equipment task does in terms of what they select it'll go to the New York team the New York exec team or the Connecticut installation team so once my workflow is done and I'm happy with it I will again validate it right here and of course it's in good shape I will now save it and I can make this the latest version and again, I can put commentary about this version of the entire workflow, and I'll close the editor. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to apps. At this point in time, I'm able to then take my process that I just built and link that to my process app. As you recall earlier, hardware apps was the one I had talked about. So I click on this. This is my included model. All right. I will go to app editor. All right, that's already included. Had it not been included, I can include other processes in there, but this is the one I want to include. So from here, I'll go off and save. I can then publish it. The key here is to publish it. So I've built my nice workflow. I've versioned my nice workflow. I now need to publish the whole process. That way, it's available in the app, this latest version. So I'll hit publish, save, and close editor. Now I am good to go in terms of using that latest process model that I just created. So from here, I'm going to go back to our starting point, if you will. And remember, I did all this through Kickstart. 
Okay, so now I will go off to my special app, Hardware Needs. So this is where my process will be exposed. I'll click on it, and I will go to Processes, and I will say Start New Process. And this is the one, of course, that's attached to this particular application. I'm going to say Hardware Request, and I'm going to say For Mike, and I'll hit Start Process. So now my process is started, and for purposes of this demonstration, I've done some routing to myself. So up here, show your tasks. I'm going to go off and say equipment order reviewers, because that's what I'm working on right now, and that's who I am. And here's the one started a few seconds ago. I will claim it. Once claimed, I can fill it out, so I'll fill it out right now. So I need a project manager laptop. I'll select laptop here, my different options. My cost for purposes of this, I'm going to say $1,200. I'm going to say this is new equipment. All right. And if need be, of course, I can drag and drop, bring in files for the process. For purposes now, I'm just going to submit this form to get us going. Okay. Once I've done that, that task is now underway. Now I want to go off and take a look at that task that I just forwarded. I'm going to go up here to my filter. Now this task is those where I'm involved. So I'm going to click to where I'm involved. And here is what I just did, created about a minute ago. Okay. I can claim it. All right. And you'll see, is there a cost benefit included? If there is, I check it off. If not, I leave it alone. And then an external approval date. Because remember here, what I'm doing is I'm approving the cost. So I put a date in there. And here is what was requested. So this is the information entered in that previous task. And I can approve or reject this particular request. Okay. There's no CBA attached. So because there's no documents attached, so I will not check that. But I do approve the date based on the numbers and dollars I see here. Okay. Now, as you can see here, it's now an approval task available to me. What I want to show you is I'm going to go to processes right here. Okay. And here's the process that we've been working on. Let me show you the diagram real quick. All right. You'll notice blue, 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 and now green. The idea here is it went through this task, through here, up here, and down here, and now this is green. These are gray because I haven't started yet. All right. You'll also notice, which is pretty nice, those annotations we talked about. So this allows people who are in the middle of the process to get a better understanding of what's going on so they can see what different tasks mean or what they might need to do. All right. So again, in this example, just want to show you the idea that says where it's been, okay, where it is right now, and of course, after we're done here, the next step it will be going to based on what is done in this task. So after reviewing the workflow, I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to my tasks right here. And here's that task we're working on. I'm going to claim it. And this is the approval task. So you'll notice I need to select a person. OK, some comments. Again, here's previous information following it along. So when I click on this, I'm going to enter a person's name, type, typing that name. And the list of people that appear are going to be based on, again, who is in that equipment order group. That way, I don't see the entire company in that list. All right. Now, this happens to be an executive laptop. I know that because that's my role in the approval. When I click on that, up pops the field. And then I choose that executive. And special comments, please be nice. All right. So the idea here is I can enter any special comments regarding this. If I approve it, of course, I hit approve, my outcome, or I can hit reject. I'm going to hit approve. OK, now you can see I've logged in as Jay right now. Because remember, Jay was the person that I asked to handle the order piece. So Jay would come in. He would see the default tasks and some ones that he's built. And he clicks on My Tasks. And what he's presented with is this order equipment piece that we just did a few moments ago. All right. And all he has to do is select that installation team. All right. So he selects the installation team, whoever he decides appropriate, and then he hits complete. OK, now we're logged back in as me, Adam Storch, and let's take a look at that workflow. My tasks. From here, I can look at my task and my processes. Let's look at my processes. Here's the one that we just made today. 
Okay, you'll notice that it's sitting, actually, looks like the New York exec installation team has already claimed it. So Jason Jolly has claimed this task. The inventory control group, routed to a group, not yet claimed. Here are the various people that have done the work, completed tasks, if you will, the equipment request, cost review, approval request, and order equipment. So you can see everything that's happened with this particular process, as well as where it is right now. If I click the show diagram, it also gives me a nice visual indicator of the path it's been taken, okay, and of course, where it is now with the New York installation team as well as inventory control. So as you can see, you have a visual indicator of where this workflow went, okay, as well as who has it now, inventory control and the New York executive installation team. Thanks for joining us for this presentation. I hope it gave you a good overview of the kinds of things you can do with Activity BPMS. Again, focused on sort of the out of the box side of life. I highly recommend you guys download, take a look, build some processes. If you like, you're welcome to give us a call. We'll be happy to work with you to build out those processes and take better advantage of the Activity Engine. Thanks and have a great day.